Pauline Attenborough was 72 years old, but she looked much younger. When a soft light shone on her, she could look as young as 30. She had a lovely figure and face, and her nose was a very good shape. Only her big, grey eyes made her look older. Pauline had left her husband, Ronald, many years ago. They had two sons, Henry and Robert. Henry, the older son, had died when Robert was only ten. Now Robert was thirty-two. He lived with his mother and worked as a lawyer in London. Robert Attenborough did not earn very much money, but this was not a problem. His mother was a rich woman. Pauline's niece, Sis, also lived in the house. Her father, Ronald Attenborough's brother, had died five years ago. Sis had no money or home of her own. She needed a place to live. So she depended on her aunt Pauline. Sis was a big young woman, with dark hair and eyes. She was very shy. She was in love with her cousin, Robert, but she had never told him this. Robert was also very shy. He had no confidence in himself. Pauline, Robert and Sis lived together quietly, in a lovely house about 25 miles from London. The house was surrounded by pleasant gardens. It was the perfect house and the perfect life for Pauline. Every day, Robert went to work in London. Then when he came home, the three of them ate dinner together. During dinner, there were always candles on the table. Pauline liked candles because the soft candlelight made her look young and beautiful. The soft light shone on the skin of her bare arms and the soft material of her dress. Pauline shone with happiness. She looked like a beautiful woman only 32 or 33. After dinner, they had coffee in the warm drawing room. The room was full of lovely furniture. For many years, Pauline had collected furniture and beautiful, unusual pictures from many different countries. She had sold these things to museums for a lot of money. This had made her a rich woman. At the side of the house, there was a large courtyard. Sis had a flat just across the courtyard, above the old coach house and stables. Several years ago, a carriage and horses had been kept in these buildings. Now Robert kept his car in the coach house. Sis did not always go to her flat after dinner. In summer, she sometimes sat outside in the large garden. She listened to Pauline's laughter coming from the drawing room. In winter, Sis put on a thick coat and walked through the garden and down to the little bridge over the stream. She liked to hear the water running under the bridge. She would look back at the lighted windows of the drawing room, where Pauline and Robert were so happy together. Sometimes Sis stayed in the dark garden until about ten o'clock, when she saw the light go on in Pauline's bedroom. Robert usually stayed in the drawing room for another hour, then he would go to bed too. In the mornings, Robert went to London at about nine o'clock. Pauline rested in bed. She came downstairs at lunchtime. Sometimes she did not leave her bedroom until tea time, but she always looked fresh and young. Pauline always had a rest in the afternoons. When the sun shone, she liked to lie outside and bathe in the warm sun. Behind the stables, there was a second, smaller courtyard, which was surrounded by trees. For years, Pauline had kept her paintings hidden away in her small cottage, too afraid to show them to anyone for fear of ridicule or rejection. But one day, 
she decided that it was time to share her work with the world. She gathered up her paintings and brought them to a local art gallery, where she nervously asked if they would be willing to display them. To her surprise and delight, the gallery owner was impressed by Pauline's paintings and agreed to exhibit them. The opening night of the exhibition was a huge success, with many of the paintings selling for high prices. Her paintings were featured in galleries and exhibitions in Europe and the United States, and she even received an invitation to show her work at the prestigious Royal Academy of Arts in London. She was grateful for the recognition that her paintings had received, but she never forgot the joy that painting had brought to her life. Pauline Attenborough had finally found the courage to share her talent with the world. As Pauline's reputation as an artist grew, she began to receive more and more commissions from wealthy collectors who wanted to own one of her paintings. She was even offered large sums of money for some of her most prized pieces, but she refused to part with them, as each painting held a special place in her heart. One day, a wealthy American collector visited Pauline's village and offered to buy all of her paintings for an enormous sum of money. Pauline was tempted by the offer, but she couldn't bear the thought of her beloved paintings being scattered across the world and never seen together again. She politely declined the offer and continued to paint in her small cottage, surrounded by her treasured creations. Years went by, and Pauline's health began to decline. She could no longer paint as often as she once had, and she knew that her time was growing short. One day, she called the owner of the local art gallery and asked if he would be willing to display all of her paintings one final time. The owner agreed, and the exhibition was held in honor of Pauline's life and her contribution to the art world. People came from all over to see the paintings, and they marveled at the beauty and skill of the work. Many of them had never heard of Pauline Attenborough before, but they left the exhibition with a newfound appreciation for her talent and her legacy. Of all the people who visited the exhibition, one young girl was particularly touched by Pauline's paintings. Her name was Lily, and she was only ten years old, but she had a deep love for art and had always dreamed of becoming an artist herself. As she looked at the paintings, Lily felt a sense of wonder and inspiration that she had never felt before. She knew that she wanted to create something just as beautiful and meaningful as what she was seeing. Years later, Lily did become an artist, and she attributed her success to that fateful day when she first saw Pauline Attenborough's paintings. The legacy of Pauline Attenborough continued to grow over the years, with more and more people discovering her paintings and the story of her remarkable life. Her small cottage in the English countryside became a place of pilgrimage for art lovers from around the world, who came to see the place where Pauline had created so many beautiful works of art. In recognition of her contribution to the world of art, the local government decided to dedicate a small museum to Pauline Attenborough, where her paintings could be displayed permanently for all to see. The museum was a great success, with visitors coming from far and wide to admire Pauline's work and to learn more about her life and her legacy. Some of her most famous works were sold for millions of dollars at auction, a testament to the enduring power of her art and the incredible legacy that she had left behind. Many awards and scholarships were established in Pauline's name, helping to support and encourage the next generation of artists. 
The Pauline Attenborough Foundation was also established, which provided funding for art programs and initiatives that promoted creativity and artistic expression. To this day, Pauline Attenborough remains an inspiration to artists and art lovers around the world. Her paintings are celebrated for their beauty and their emotional depth, and her life story continues to be a source of inspiration for those who are struggling to find their own voice and their own path in life. Through her art, Pauline had found a way to connect with the world and to express her deepest emotions and feelings. She had shown that even the most ordinary person can create something extraordinary. Pauline's story is a reminder that greatness can come from the most unexpected places, and that even in the darkest of times, there is always hope and beauty to be found. As time passes, Pauline Attenborough's story continues to be told and retold, inspiring new generations to discover the beauty and power of art. Her paintings remain an enduring legacy, a testament to her extraordinary talent and her indomitable spirit. In a world where so many people are searching for meaning and purpose, Pauline's story is a powerful reminder of the importance of following our passions and pursuing the things that bring us joy and fulfillment. Pauline's paintings are also a reflection of the human experience and our connection to the world around us. They capture moments of beauty and stillness, but also moments of struggle and pain. Through her art, Pauline was able to express the full range of human emotions, and her paintings continue to resonate with people around the world. She faced numerous challenges and setbacks throughout her life, but she never gave up on her dream of creating something beautiful and meaningful. Through her paintings, she explored themes such as women's rights, social justice, and the impact of war on society. Her work often depicted women in powerful and unconventional roles, challenging traditional gender norms and giving voice to the experiences of women in a male-dominated world. She was a vocal advocate for women's suffrage and was involved in various political and social causes throughout her life. Pauline was also deeply engaged with the political and social issues of her time, using her art as a platform for activism and social change. Her story is a testament to the power of art as a tool for social and political activism, and a reminder that artists have a unique role to play in shaping the world around us.